Hello and welcome to the launch of the seventh um, edition of the TBE book. My name is Daniela Lamarca. I'm the publisher of Global Health Press, publisher of the book. Um, the TBE book has received by now over 2 million readers worldwide and includes this year a um, newly designed TBE risk map, which I highly recommend checking out. I'm here today with Professor Schmidt, our editor-in-chief and co-editor of the book. Together, we will give you a glimpse into this comprehensive and vital resource, which piled up to more than 400 pages this year. Once again, it was curated by our esteemed team of editors, and all five of them will present the key points in the following few minutes. With contributions from uh, 103 authors covering 36 countries and two additional chapters, this edition promises to be currently the most extensive and up-to-date resource on TBE. Since the epidemiology of TBE changes annually, as evidenced by the identification of new TBE risk countries and the discovery of new risk regions within individual countries, the authors of this book have worked re relentlessly um, together the relevant data and information for the seventh edition. Thanks to the generous support from Pfizer, the TBE book is available for free to anyone interested in the global spread of TBE virus infections and can be accessed at tbenews.com, where the entire work as well as individual chapters can be downloaded as PDF or viewed as an online flip version. Uh, we are proud to present this helpful resource to the global community. Uh, thank you for watching and welcome, Professor Schmidt. Thank you, Daniela, and thank you very much for making this happen. It is really a great challenge every year to get the data together. We are presenting the most current data on the epidemiology, but also we updated all chapters, so I'm very pleased to tell you that this is really a wonderful and updated new edition. To introduce TBE, we just cover here the basics in the next two minutes. Tick-borne encephalitis is an infection of the central nervous system, which is caused by a virus, the TBE virus. Now, the life cycle of this virus is very complex, and I don't go into this. The important point is the main vector for transmission are ticks, and we hear about that later by one of the editors. In addition, sometimes ticks infect animals, and if it happens so during the stage of viremia, the virus may pass into cow milk, and then you may be infected by dairy products. The disease occurs from the United Kingdom to Japan in the Far East, and from the um, a very high latitude, a northern latitude in Norway down to Tunisia. So a very far belt, a very large belt, uh, in Europe and in Asia. 95% of cases occur during May and November, but you may hear this year why this may change and why there may be uh, transmissions throughout the year due to a new tick that is able to transmit the disease basically year round. The incidence is less than one per 100,000 to more than 30 per 100,000. It is unpredictable and it varies annually. The virus has three classic subtypes, the European, Siberian, and Far Eastern, and there are two new subtypes, Baikalian and Himalayan, that were recently described. Following the infection, there may be three consequences. Mostly, there are no symptoms. We know specifically from Austria, infections are asymptomatic. Some patients come down with non-CNS diseases. They are usually missed because nobody tests for tick-borne encephalitis if you have diarrhea or a psychiatric disorder, but these cases have been proven. And then there is central nervous system infection. Of those who survive the disease, more than 30-40% of subjects have sequela, long-term sequela that affect their daily life. And in children, this is mainly mental sequela, as we know since a couple of years. Case fatality is 0.5 to 20% depending on where you live and maybe the availability of medical care with symptomatic treatment. It may also depend on the individual subtype that infects. 
There is no specific therapy, and this is why local authorities, ECDC and WHO, recommend vaccination as the best way to prevent tick-borne encephalitis. A more high-level view tells you TBE is very similar. It has very many similarities with tetanus. The disease is not eradicable in tetanus. The spores are in the soil, and it will never be possible to eradicate tetanus. It is a comparatively rare disease, tetanus like TBE. The reservoirs outside humans. Vaccination results in individual protection only. There is no herd protection. And again, both diseases can be very severe. Having said this, I hand over to my co-editor-in-chief, which is uh, Dr. Doppler from uh, Munich, and he is one of the best-known TBE experts in the world. And here you see his interview. Our first topic is TBE case numbers are increasing. And for that, we have now our editor on the TBE book, uh, Dr. Gerhard Doppler, and he is the most active researcher in all fields of TBE, and he's also the head of the German National Reference Center for TBE. Gerhard, TBE numbers in Europe and elsewhere are increasing, right? Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, we see during the last eight to 10 years, uh, unusual development in the human TB cases in many parts of Europe. Uh, and you have uh, 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 a lot of data about this uh, development in the new TB book. We see there is increasing numbers in Northern Europe. We see increasing numbers also in uh, Western Europe. The virus is spreading into new areas. And the reason for this is more or less unclear. We are discussing if climate change could be a reason for this, but the point is um, we do not see this increase uh, in uh, an increase in cases in more northern parts of Europe. We do not see the main part of increasing in more cases in higher altitudes, which is uh, uh, climate change could be responsible. We see uh, east-west migration of TB cases. We see that France is more and more involved, that first cases are now discussed in Netherlands. First cases we saw during the last few years in even in, uh, in the British island. And uh, this seems to be really a natural migration of the virus from east to west. Another question is, could vaccination rates be responsible for this increase of human cases? And we can clearly say no. We see even in high vaccinated countries like Austria, where 85 to 90 percent of people are protected by vaccination, even in this uh, country, we see exactly the same increase of uh, human cases on a low level, but an increasing trend during the last years. So we have to state at the moment, tick-borne encephalitis shows an increasing activity in nature. This causes more human cases. And this is seen in this increasing human cases all over Europe. So there is increasing activity of virus in nature. And when we will not increase our efforts regarding vaccination, we have to live with this increasing, and I call it often, silent pandemic of tick-borne diseases during the next years and maybe even decades. Thank you, Gerhard. And um, just repeating your message, it appears that TBE is increasing in Central Europe, in Northern Europe, and elsewhere, and it is spreading. Thank you very much. Thank you also. Sehr schön. Now, TBE is transmitted by ticks, and one of the best researchers on ticks in the world is Lydia Kitimia Doppler. And Lydia, what is the story with the ticks? Uh, ticks are obligatory blood feeding arthropods and they are considered the second most important vectors of pathogens after mosquitoes in human medicine and the most important vectors in veterinary medicine. 
and uh, this is the cost of worldwide economy loss in veterinary medicine is estimated to be in the range of billions of dollars annually. Not to forget that the ticks have a direct effect on the host when they are feeding, producing tick paralysis, which can bring 26 mortality in rate in affected horses and 5% in dogs in Australia, for example. And they produce also severe toxemias and blood loss. The indirect effect is what we consider the, um, the high variety of microorganisms that they can transmit. And the exudate ticks uh, transmit 40% of vector borne zoonotic diseases, more than mosquitoes, which transmit only 36%. The tick life cycle is very long comparing with mosquitoes and their life cycle can be completed in three to four months or in four to six years. And this is depending on the tick species, the number of the host they need and of course the environment conditions like temperatures and humidity as the main factors. How is it possible that a life cycle to be completed in a few years it is easy to explain this because the ticks engorge a huge amount of concentrated blood, uh, up to eight milliliter for the big ticks, and um, this will take place in a few days. So they have after this a uh, slow digestion and they can survive without a blood meal up to two years, depending on the life stage, of course, and by using the food reserve remaining from the anterior life stage feeding. After mating for the males with several females and 1,000 eggs lying for females, the adult ticks died. Concerning uh, tick-borne encephalitis virus, we have two important tick species, Ixodes ricinus and Ixodes basulcatus. Uh, in the Europe, Ixodes ricinus and North Africa also, and Ixodes basulcatus in North Europe and large parts of Asia. But the Macento reticulatus became a very important tick species on the one hand due to the, the fast speed spreading in the many European countries um, and in uh, new regions in the countries where it was already known or present. And on the other hand, uh, this tick species is a uh, competitive vector for tick-borne encephalitis virus. In Europe, um, Dermacentor reticulatus adults are active from September to May, June, so even in winter and is able to transmit a tick-borne encephalitis virus also during the winter. Together with Ixodes ricinus and Ixodes basulcatus, which are active from March to October, TBE virus transmission may occur all year round. On the other hand, Ixodes ricinus and Ixodes basulcatus activity change during the last years, and we uh, see that the activity started two to two, four weeks earlier than before. That means we have an earlier transmission of tick-borne encephalitis virus in the regions where these two ticks occurred. Regarding the other ways of transmission of TB virus, we learned in recent years that the virus is not transmitted from the mother to the unborn child during the pregnancy, but it can be transmitted during the breastfeeding. Alimentary transmission by consumption of raw milk and uh, dairy products from raw milk has been a frequent way of transmission uh, since many, many years. And during the last years in, uh, with the development of the back to nature, we again see this from the transmission also in the industry countries like Austria or Germany. Um, data now show that the vaccination against TBE will also protect from this route of transmission. So ticks are on the earth around uh, 3 million years and um, the moment they are not strategies to eliminate the ticks. Therefore, we have to learn how to live with ticks and tick bomb pathogens they are able to transmit. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Lydia. So for me, the new message is 
transmission via breastfeeding. And the new other new item is really that is not very much known is Thermocenter reticulatus can spread TBE all year round. Thank you very much again. Thank you. Next in our series is Dr. Wilhelm Erber, and he has been involved in TBE research since 1985. He started to work on the topic together with Professor Kunz from the University of Vienna, and he is the inventor of the modern TBE vaccine licensed here in Europe. Welcome, Dr. Erber, and what is your message for the audience? Where is there a risk for TBE? Ladies and gentlemen, there is no commonly used definition of TBE risk areas out there in the different countries. Areas where one could be infected with that virus after a tick bite. <clears throat> Most definitions and consequently vaccination recommendations are based on recognized and reported human TBE disease frequencies in a given area. Such data, however, are, are inappropriate as case numbers fluctuate annually, e.g. due to varying virus circulation in nature, e.g. due to different human behavior, increased exposure, so to say. And serology is not regularly available or not even done in uh, some countries due to low awareness. A more comprehensive solution, therefore, is proposed by the ECDC. And the ECDC risk area definition basically says that any area where the chance for transmission of the TBE virus to humans is higher than nil is actually a risk area. Our TBE book, therefore, defines countries as imperiled affected or endemic. And our TBE risk map you see in chapter 12 basically is based on first human TBE cases recognized in the given area, second on infections in animals, or third on TBE virus isolation out there in nature. While data are incomplete due to lack of studies, but more, more and more countries and regions are now added, and hopefully we will get a more comprehensive picture of the TBE virus risk areas in Europe and Asia. Please consider new areas in the last decade have been recognized in France, in the UK, in Japan, in the Netherlands, and even in Tunisia. New endemic areas have also been recognized in higher alpine areas of Switzerland and Austria, and in Norway in, the north, in, the, in, the, in a latitude above 65 degrees. Thank you so much for joining us, and uh, goodbye. Now, our most important topic for today, which is vaccines and vaccination. Our expert here is Dr. Michael Brücker, and he has been involved in vaccine research since more than 30 years. So welcome, Michael. What is your most important message for our audience on TBE vaccination? Yeah, it's a question. Are you worrying about the many vaccination schedules? And I will discuss this in the next three minutes. At a glance, the vaccination schedules look different for the different TBE vaccine brands and in various countries. In this short contribution, I will focus on the two TBE vaccines licensed by the European manufacturers Pfizer and Bavarian Nordic. And I will omit the Russian and the Chinese TBE vaccines because these are only marketed in a limited number of countries. The two European TBE vaccines are FSME immune, also termed Ticovac in some countries and marketed by Pfizer, and Encipure, marketed by Bavarian Nordic. We distinguish between the so-called primary vaccination from a booster vaccination. 
The primary vaccination is the first use of a given vaccine to induce antibody production to confer protection. The booster vaccination should refresh the immune response later on when protection is yet required. A primary TBE vaccination always consists of three injections. In the so-called classical or conventional vaccination schedule, the first injection is given at day zero and the second injection is given after one to three months. The third injection is given nine to 12 months after the second dose. If you use Ensipure, and five to 12 months if you have started with FSME immune. In addition to the classical or conventional primary vaccination schedules, accelerated or rapid schedules have been developed if the individual needs quickly protection. For both FSME immune and insecure, the second vaccine dose can already be applied two weeks after the first injection instead of one to three months. In addition, the so-called rapid vaccination schedule has been licensed for Ensipure, and here three vaccine doses are applied at day zero, day seven, and day 21. After having received three TBE vaccine doses, by either brands or vaccination schedules, the vaccinee is protected against TBE. Now I proceed with the booster vaccinations. For both vaccines, the first booster dose should be given three years after the complete primary vaccination of three injections. Further booster doses are given every five years. However, if the rapid vaccination has been used for Ensipure, the first booster dose should already be given after 12 to 18 months. When you get older, the booster interval is shortened from five to three years. According to the leaflet of Ensipure, the three-year booster interval is recommended for individuals from 50 years onwards and for FSME immune when you have reached 60 years of age. Otherwise, some countries have adopted increased and have increased the booster intervals to 10 years. So far, I have explained the vaccination schedules for adults. Both manufacturers have developed TBE vaccine formulation for children and the vaccination schedules for adults are also valid for children from one year of age onwards to 11 years when vaccinated with Ensipure and to 15 years when FSME immune is used. As you see, different vaccination schedules have been developed for FSME immune and Ensipure, both for use in children and adults. Second, Vaccination committees of European countries have passed different recommendations for the booster intervals. If you need to be protected against TBE, just follow the rules in your country. In general, you should make use of the classical or conventional vaccination schedule. If you need protection at a good pace, you can use the accelerated or rapid vaccination schedule you will get an acceptable protection already after two injections for a limited time. That means that travelers to a TBD, TBE endemic country can have trust in two injections only instead three injections during travel time. For booster vaccinations, you can exchange the brands. If you have missed a timely injection, this can be caught up any time every vaccine injection counts. Be wise, get vaccinated if you are at risk to acquire a TBE virus infection. Thank you very much, Michael. That was really a quick summary. Uh, if I may say, the important message is there are two vaccines out here in Europe and one in the United States, and um, they are safe and they are highly effective 
And the most important thing is you have to use them to be protected. If you don't use them, you are or you may be at risk. Thank you very much. And uh, this was a very nice, very important message to the audience. Thank you all together for listening.